Hello, this is Pastor Dave Stewart of Destiny Preparation, welcoming you to the program. This is Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. And we're in celebration mode here this weekend. It's the weekend before Thanksgiving, uh, a, a great time to give thanks. I, I always appreciate Thanksgiving in the spirit of it being a time to stop and pause and realize what you have to be thankful for. Truly, God has been good to us. And many times I know there's a lot of difficult things that go on, challenges in life, life throws all kind of curveballs at you. But you know what? We can all sit back and realize that through it all, we have something to be thankful for. We're still here. We're breathing. We're alive. God is keeping us through it all. You know, sometimes we're a lot more blessed than we realize because we spend a lot of time focusing on how to fix or make it through the problems. But I encourage you to take this week, take a moment, especially this Thursday, and just sit back and just count your blessings. Consider what God has done for you, even from the last year to now. And there may be some things that didn't go your way, but I'm sure you'll find that there are some things that God has done for you and graced you with as well. This Sunday, this weekend, we're having our annual Harvest Day celebration right here. And so after service this Sunday, a special dinner taking place. Your course are invited to come and be a part of it. You don't have to bring anything. There's no charge for it. But we will be gathering. We'll set up tables in here. We'll have all kind of food. And we're just going to have a good fellowship time. So come for service at 1130 and then stay after for our Harvest Day dinner this weekend. God bless you. I'm looking forward to you. I want you to come. And bring your family and come to that. Bring the extended family, bring the big family and tell them to come and join us this Sunday. Now, let me take you to the word of God. This is a sermon that's going to start this week, continue next week. And I believe it's a powerful word for you. It shows us how to move and operate under the power of God. There is power in what you say, power to do good and power to do bad. We can bless and curse with our tongue. The Bible tells us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. And he told the disciples that you're going to, whatsoever you bind on earth, I'm going to bind in heaven, whatsoever you loose, I'll loose. That's power. But the power comes from speaking it, declaring it, and not just in your mind. You encourage yourself when you speak it out in the atmosphere and you can send the devil to flight by speaking it out. I'm already preaching the sermon, but I want you to listen to this and I want this to bless you. Don't forget. Speak. Speak it out. Don't just think it. Don't just pray inside. Speak it into the atmosphere and change the atmosphere around you. Now, I hope this blesses you and I hope we'll see you this weekend. God bless you. He is intentional. He's working in your favor. We've been talking about favor a lot uh, over the past few weeks. And in particular, we've been talking even more specifically about faith. Um, I've started a series on Wednesdays that I want to encourage everyone, if you haven't been a part of it yet, you're missing something good. We've been talking about living by faith. Everybody say living by faith. Living by faith. And I really believe that this is one of the most vital lessons for us as Christians to learn. We must live by faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. That means trusting God. And I've been watching over the past first couple of weeks of this. You can see kind of eyes opening. You know, how sometimes you can, as you're speaking to people, you can kind of see starting to get it. And so I really believe that this is valuable and important. Any child of God, any Christian must learn not only what faith is, but how to live by faith. You've got to live it out. And we've been sharing that on Wednesdays. I want to encourage you to come. It's not too late. We're going to continue until the Lord tells us elsewise. But this is such an important, solid point. I can't emphasize to you enough how important this is because this will change your life. It will change your relationship with God. It will change what you see coming forth as a result of your relationship with God. A lot of people are saved, but they don't really see God moving and operating in their lives the way that they think that they would expect to. They don't see it the way they see it in the Bible. Amen. Amen. There's a reason for that. And I've been sharing with you a little bit on Sundays about that in terms of being able to trust God. God looks for those whom he can trust. And God looks for you to trust him. The main thing that God is looking for are people that will trust him. And that is the aspect of living by faith. So let me just give you a little bit as we preempt into this of, of what we've been talking about 
on, on, on Wednesdays because it's important. It's important. Uh, I, I've been sharing, as I said, that you've been, you can be saved and connected to God without fully experiencing the benefits of the relationship. Anybody ever been in a relationship where you did not really experience the benefits of that relationship? Amen. Yeah, we got a relationship going on, but I never get a chance to do anything with anything. You know, it's all about the other person. Anybody been in a relationship like that? You've ever been in a relationship where that person may have things and assets, but you have not had access to them. And it's not just male, female. Sometimes it can be parents. Sometimes it can be work relationships. Sometimes it can be business relationships. You ever been in a relationship where it just seemed like you weren't getting any benefits out of it? I say that because I want you to understand you can be in a relationship, but not experience the benefits of the relationship. You can be in a relationship with God because you're saved, you've surrendered, submitted in terms of salvation, but you're not yet seeing or reaping all the benefits of being in that relationship. I dare say that most people have that issue. You may be saved, but you're not seeing God really reaping or moving in your life the way that, you know, the Bible says. And many times we get frustrated because we start quoting scriptures that we don't see happening in our lives. Anybody ever been there? Uh, he, he promised this and this is supposed to happen and that. And I don't see it. And I'm wondering, I'm struggling why. Right. You, you have children and many times your your children don't always equally experience the benefits of being your child that they could, right? You may have more than one. So you have more than one child. And some of those kids may get more out of you than others. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever been called the favorite? Anybody ever have the favorite? Amen. We have a tendency, even though we may not want to with some of our children, we have, you don't treat all your children the same, right? And, and sometimes there's a favoritism thing, but that favoritism thing is oftentimes a result of the way that they treat you. Amen. The relationship, hear it, the relationship that you have built between you and them and they with you. You don't treat want this one the same as the one over here that won't listen to anything you say. Are y'all hearing me? How many of you realize this one won't listen to nothing you say? Guess what? They don't get the same benefits. This one's always in timeout, while this one's always watching television and staying up late and getting the extra cookies and all that stuff. Right? You have to treat them in accordance with the relationship that you have instilled or build with them. You, you, you know, some children are, you know, you, you treat them different, those that are selfish, uh -huh, from those that aren't selfish. You can't give this selfish one everything because they keep everything to themselves. This one over here, you give them something, they're sharing it out before they, before they take a bite out of it. Right. So you don't treat all those relationships. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't treat all those relationships. I I'm in relationship with all of them, but the relationships are different and the benefits reaped from them are different because of their behaviors. Amen. Well, I got children, too. I know I got three of them and I can tell you the relationships are different. Because I, some things you can trust this one with that I can't trust that. I'll let this one drive my car. But that one over there, give me them keys. <laughs> Put them down. I have some that can come in my house anytime I want. I have others where I keep the doors locked. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. It's not me, right? It's not just me. I'm not just crazy. Right? I will meet you at the house. I'm telling the truth. I'm just telling it. There are different relationships. It's not that I love one more or less than the other, but I have to deal with them in accordance with our relationship. I say this to you to help you to understand that God, you can be in a relationship with God, but not reaping all the benefits that you could reap from him because of the relationship you have established with him. God wants to be able to trust you with his gifts. He wants to be able to trust you with his blessings. The Bible says in Ephesians, he has given unto us all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And, and somebody's still crying out, where's mine? And God is saying, I'd love to give it to you, but sometimes the way you behave, 
I heard a preacher on television this morning talking about, you know, a situation where he was he was reading a situation in the Bible of how God's power moved in somebody. And he said, I would love to see that happen one time in my life. Amen. But he said, God knows I don't need that kind of power because somebody would be in trouble. <laughs> Amen. There, there are some things that God can trust you with and other things that you can't. So the relationship that you build with him is vital. It's important. And for him to trust you, you've got to first trust him. Amen. Capture that. Capture that. It starts making sense, this whole aspect of living by faith. God wants to use you, but he can't use those who don't trust him. Amen. You have to be able to trust him and not just in the things you see, understand, conceive, feel you have control over. In fact, it's where you have the least control that you have to trust him the most. And in many of our cases, it's when we are least seeing what's going on that we're struggling the most to hold on to it. Come on, somebody. Amen. God needs people who will trust him, even when the pressure's on, even when the circumstances are challenging, even when you don't understand, even when you can't conceive where this is going. He doesn't need to fight with you to take you where he's trying to get you. Because then he can't give you what you need to get where you're supposed to be going. Anybody with me? That's why you need to come on Wednesdays, because we're teaching you not only how to conceive not the concept. A lot of everybody understands. Yeah, I'm supposed to, I'm faith, faith. Right. Right. I believe. But it's a whole nother thing to put it into practical work and, and practicality of your life, because God is not looking just for what you know. He's looking for what you do. Are you all with me? Turn with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. I want to take you here. And this, in fact, is where we are right now. We were just starting in Hebrews 11 this Wednesday. You can come this Wednesday and catch up with us. But I just want to focus on these first three verses for a moment from Hebrews chapter 11. This chapter is known as the faith chapter. Uh, it, it's, an, it's a place where God gives example after example of people who lived by faith. Now, they lived it. You got to live it. You can't just have it in the moment. You just can't pull it out like a sword when something comes up. You've got to live it each and every day. Now, the first three verses of this first one says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. He makes here, uh, if you will, a, a thesis and then he proves it as he goes along, but he or gives examples of it. Faith is the substance. That's a strong statement. Faith is the substance of things you've been hoping for. There are a lot of things we wish would happen, would like to happen, would hope that it would happen. And there needs to be some way of transitioning that from the idea or from the thought into existence. God says here that faith is the substance of those hopes. Faith is the thing that converts ideas and dreams and visions into substance. Oftentimes we have a lot of dreams. Any dreamers in here? Anybody have any ideas of things that you love to see happen in your life? And sometimes you see those things just kind of wither away. They, they never quite come into fruition. That's because they're stuck on the other side of substance. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're ideas, they're images that you can imagine. In many cases, there may even be things that are established already in heaven, but there needs to be something that will transition them from the concept, from the idea, from the image, into something that's truly going to happen. How many of you want to see your dreams actually come into fruition? Amen. How many of you want to see those ideas that you have actually become something that works out before you? Amen. Amen. Faith, he says, is the key to converting it from an idea to substance. Our trust in God. Remember, faith is our trust in God. It enables the free flow of his will into our reality. In other words, if you want to see ideas that are in the presence of God or that are in the will of God come into existence, faith is the thing that you need to transition those ideas, those promises, those things of hope into reality. It's your trust in God in those things. 
that enable it to become a reality in your life. You have to learn how to trust God and you have to learn. This is what you need to understand. This is how you get it to substance. This is how you get God's will from on the paper into your life. This is how you get God's purposes for your life, his plans for your life off the writing board and into your life. It is your trust in God that is going to create substance out of things that were ideas. Y'all still with me? Amen. Amen. I want you to understand that God operates through you when you trust him. Now, look in verse two, he says, for by it, the elders obtain a good report. All these examples that he's going to give you are of the elders. The elders, he said, received a good report. In other words, they were recognized by God. What was it about them that was recognized? It was their faith. It wasn't necessarily their works. It was their faith for by their faith, they received a good report elsewhere. It shows us in the Bible that they were counted as righteousness. They were counted as righteous because of their faith. And he gives examples here that we flow through where you see different things that happened in their lives, different situations, different outcomes, and all of them are reflected. They're victorious. Why? Because of their faith. Faith is the key to seeing God operate in your life. Faith is the reason God will use you. Faith is the reason God will speak highly of you. Faith will get God's attention drawn your way. Faith will make you the child that God wants to put something into. If and only you can learn to trust him. Are y'all still with me? Amen. Come on, let it stir in your heart. What do I need to be doing more of? What do I need to get stronger at? What do I need to discipline myself at? I've got to learn how to trust God in every situation, not just in in the situations, but in life. It has to be a life thing. There are some things that you do that become the habits and the rituals of your life on a daily basis. You wake up and you have a routine, what you do in the morning, you brush your teeth and you comb your hair and you get dressed, you pick your clothes. It's the natural routine that you do. When things get out of place, you get confused, right? You wake up one morning, your toothbrush isn't where it's supposed to be. You you don't know how do I react? Where, what do I do now? Right. You get all messed up in the head because things and are not in your routine. Faith has to be a part of your routine. It has to be the natural thing that you build into your life through exercise. Are you all still with me? There are some things you build in your life by exercising. If you want to build up your body, you exercise. If you want to build up your knowledge towards something, you exercise, you memorize, you repeat, you study. If you want to build up your faith, you've got to do what? Exercise. Come on, say it loud, y'all. You've got to exercise your faith on a regular basis. It's what happens when you stop exercising. You go right back to where you used to be. And sometimes we're in it for a season, uh huh. but then we allow it to begin to fade. Oftentimes we allow it to fade when we no longer are in need. Hello. Amen. Hello. Amen. Once we get comfortable, once we get in the promised land, once we get settled, then we have no reason to keep exercising. So we sit back in our lawn chairs and kick up our feet, amen, and just watch the days go by. And guess what? When the next wave comes, we are no longer in condition to trust God the way that we should. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. It has to become a part of your routine. So by the by by their faith, the elders received a good report. I want to get to verse three here, which is really what I want to talk to you today. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. He gives us here the first example of faith in operation. I want you to see this. This is the first example of what happens when you believe in the word of God. God himself believed and spoke and declared his own word, and he is our first example of what we are to be, what we are to do, and what our potential is. He says, says here, through faith, the worlds were framed. Talking about from the beginning, through, through faith, faith f- form framed the worlds. 
It shows you how power it is, how powerful it is. God could speak a thing and believe that thing to happen. And the world, what it say in verse one, it went from an idea into substance. Why? Because God declared it, amen, through a word. He spoke it out in faith and that which was an idea became something that was physical. He is our first example of how this happens. There's a process here that we can follow. So it tells us the world's reframe. And when we see this, we see now that things that were are now seen were came from the unseen. In other words, the world was not formed. It was not seen. There was no evidence of it. It did not exist until God declared it. And when he declared it, that which existed that was not seen yet became seen. Are you with me? Let me read this again. He says, he says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen, seen presently, were not made of things which do appear. It didn't come from building blocks. It didn't come from some pre-adequate. It didn't come from something that already existed. God changed something, made something from nothing. Science will tell you today that you can't do that, that all matter has to exist. It just transforms. But God was able to make something from nothing. He took it from a concept, from an idea, and created it into something. It says, listen, in the New Living Translation, it says that, now, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. So what we now see transition from something that didn't exist before. I want you to understand that God is giving you, you the example of what he wants to do in your life. He wants to take things that did not exist before, answers that were not there, resolutions that did not exist, amen, solutions that you could not find. He'll take the thing that does not exist and cause it to be because of your faith. Are y'all still with me? You see, many times we're looking for the existing resolution. We're looking for, for something that already exists. I'm looking for the job that already exists. I'm looking for uh, the solution, the person that already exists. I'm looking for something amongst what, amongst what I can see and already handle. God has things that you haven't even seen yet or conceived yet that he's ready and willing to release into your life. Amen. The unseen will become seen in your life if you trust in God. Come on, somebody. Listen, faith is about releasing the word of God. Faith is about releasing the word of God. Listen to what it says. It says the words, worlds were framed by the word or the commandment of God. God instructed, he made a commandment, he declared something, and the worlds came into existence. When God declared it through his word, through his, his power, released to make it happen. This is the process by which God will operate through your faith. Mm -hmm. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. Faith is your, your, not, is your evidence. Faith is your tool to seeing God's work released in your life. I want you to understand this po the power here associated with your faith. Faith is not you just sitting on the uh, sideline. Faith is you getting actively engaged in the word and the will of God being released in your life. It's his word. It's his will. It's what he's declared in your life that's going to be released. I'm not telling you you can make any wish and it's going to come to pass. This is not your genie in a bottle. This is not your Santa Claus. This is the ordained will and purposes of God for your life. God has intent for your life. God has blessings over your life. As you do of your children, you see, you envision something for them. You want to see them head in the right direction. So you provide them with what they need to be successful in the things that are ordained in their future. Many times you're putting things in their life for things they don't even understand they're going to need yet. Hello? You're forcing them to go to school every day. They don't understand why they need to do that. You're making, you're giving them the discipline of waking up and going to sleep and studying and doing different things. And they can't conceive of why they need it. But you're putting things in their life that they need in order to reach the goals that they don't even understand they have yet. 
God wants to put things in your life. Amen. He has will. He has purpose in your life. It's aligned with his word. What's going to happen in your life. But your involvement is your faith. Your trust in God enables the door to be open that will bring into your life the will and the purposes of God. How many of you want to see the will and purposes of God moving and operating in your life? Come on, y'all, if you really believe it today, you ought to declare it right now. Today is about declaring. Today is about declaring. You got to get, come on, you got to get a little pumped up here with me. Amen. The worlds were framed by the word. God had an idea. He spoke it. And it came into existence. See that happen. God had a concept. He spoke out that concept and then it came into existence. Your faith is about releasing it. It's about releasing what God says. So here's your instruction where the concept, the idea comes into your life, where the obstacles are in your life, where the struggle is in your life, where you're looking to see God move in your life, where you're ready to release the will of God in your life. You speak it. Huh? And then it comes into existence. Whatever God declares in you, you speak it and then it comes into existence. You release the will of God in your life and then you'll see the substance comes that comes from your faith.